It's beginning. Okay, cool. How are you on side? Um... <laughs> Sometimes you read interviews and someone like has this outlandish take on something and then they kind of force the person being interviewed to respond as if that's correct. Yeah. And sometimes I, that's, I think that's like happens to every artist you like and then you see the artist like politely taking in that interpretation. So, but maybe it leads you actually farther away from understanding the person's work. So I was going to talk about stuff that I noticed and maybe you could tell me how close I am to being correct, or cool. or how you feel about so those that's so warmer was the I I got warmer from you in the mail and I remember reading that comment I remember like reading it in my room, which you later subletted, um, and I just remember because it was so different than other comics I'd seen, but it was so like um, it was like sometimes people's like first comic it's already there it's already like their voice. You know what I mean? And you've done stuff before, but it's like, like you say in the interview, and it's, it's what I say in the note to the reader in Gulag Casual, this is like the beginning of like yeah. the work that relates to what we both do now. Yeah. So I was relating warmer to the, the work, your, the, your current work, and so there's this really, to me, warmer is more of like a reflection maybe of different emotional states you were going through mixed together, whereas the new work kind of has, it's to me more like a puzzle. There's an obvious like, you have an obvious emotional reaction to it, but it's mm -hmm. much more like there's there's a lot more to sift through. And I was wondering if that makes sense to you, or if that's something if the if you are trying to obstruct it more in recent work, or if that's totally off. I mean, I think it's on in terms of like I, I the rawness or something. Um, since like that was basically like the first step from taking like draw life drawings and zines and things and then combining it with this other stuff that I was writing. So it was like lists and like very young, emotive, expressive work. And just kind of like putting those things together. Right. And I think just being a more like sensitive, pained human being at the time. <laughs> Whereas like those things were really like, I was really feeling a but lot. But see, I don't, I mean, I will say reading through it now, Warmer doesn't feel like the feelings of a adolescent or someone that is just about to become it doesn't feel to me doesn't feel I don't feel like the emotion is necessarily different than the, the current work mm. it's just more like upfront yeah but that's just my that's just my reason. I mean I think that's the construction of well I think now just understanding that I'm making stories that wasn't necessarily understanding I was making a story huh. Um, like it wasn't necessarily even de I like in my mind, there was no deconstruction of character setting narrative. It was just like this thing right. that came together. And I think now I'm much more considerate of devices. I mean, maybe that is part of it is like understanding the format. So manipulating it more subtly or something. Right. Yeah, I guess, like, constructing it in a... I mean, I think kind of what you're saying with, like, a puzzle. Like, now when I come into a story, I kind of have, like, maybe themes to touch on or I have kind of these narr narrative arcs that I'm curious about. And I have these different elements. And then it's kind of just putting those together. Right. Um, and then as I draw, then the drawing kind of becomes what is influencing how that flows. Right. Well, you know, in the recent work. Yeah, in the recent work. Whereas in the other work, I think it was much more... I mean, it was much more un, just unconscious. Right. Because um, I was thinking... Because I was looking at something like Reflections, and I was like... In, you know, in the interview with Bill in the back of the book, you talk about Warmer and about how it starts off with just some still life drawing in a cafe, uh -huh. and then there were other things happening, and you kind of build it all together. And I was wondering, is that is that something that's remained constant because you could look at something like reflections and it's like here's maybe some conversations that maybe you were having maybe you overheard yeah. phrases that meant something to you multiplied with here are some landscapes yeah. that maybe I saw during this time yeah. and they relate because you were going through seeing these things or hearing these things like this is just my reading yeah and I was like maybe the, the way you constructed warmer is a window to understanding to me, a not super complex narrative, but one that's not, one that is, Reflections has, like, it's not immediately 
like it's it's not just completely laid out there for you, but maybe that's yeah. a key to be like these are things that you're seeing and feeling and they're mixed together because it's happening at the time. And I was like, yeah. maybe that's a constant way you've worked. But also, I mean, based on your response, it's also like, it doesn't, I, maybe it's not that upfront because you are, you're curating, you're more like controlling, whereas warmer is like more upfront. More, it's, the other ones are more like you're controlling how the person enters into these, into these feelings. Or like you're, you're more like the, the guide. Yeah. Well, because I think in Warmer 2, it's like, it's pretty much just me. Like, I am the character. Yeah, yeah. Like, like those are my, like, exact <laughs> feelings and, like, mental dialogue. Like, to a T and, like, my, you know, my, like, body in times, my, like, actual clothing, my setting. Like, all of it is so much me. But then who is the other person then? Because you're... It's just, a, it's just a counter to myself. Like, <laughs> it's not actually anyone that I knew. Right. So it was kind of... I mean, that's one of the things that I thought was so... Like, I Blaze brought up at a panel, which was like his... Like his panel, comics or whatever. Um, how for him they're kind of they're just like the ability to play out his own mental dialogue but make it interesting by distilling parts into different characters kind of right um and so i mean i think that's a lot of time like why i only have like two or three characters tops because it's kind of giving them each a little something yeah um but mostly i but yeah like having one come more primarily from whatever I have or have experienced or like want to say, I mean, I guess that's pretty standard, but. Well, it's, it's funny though, because I noticed that too, like one thing that both our collections share is that each story has like a like theater version of like the amount of characters. Like there's not yeah. that many characters, yeah. you know, it's like play structure. Totally. Yeah. Well, and what I, I mean, I don't know, like to me, that book or after nothing comes is interesting to look through because it's basically the same story over and over again right um <laughs> which is like i never you know considering it was over five years or something i actually i when i was looking through it i didn't i don't know they felt all this stuff felt just like um the well little, it's, it's examining just- similar things um i mean even just the concept of nothing comes up multiple times like, it comes up in Dark, where it's, like, the looming monster guy. Yeah. Um, and then in the After Nothing Comes, kind of just, like, examining this emptiness or examining environment, um, examining landscape, and, like, and mental, and mental landscape, too, I guess. Like, that's a, that's a theme that's really consistent through most of those stories. What all's in there? Well, one thing I noticed is that in some of the early stories you talk about you're like characters are talking about how cold it is not like like actual physical cold but in like like, it's like I'm it feels really cold yeah and then in the in glass surfaces it's like you talk about that too and it's like the approach and the way of rendering everything has changed but it's still like it's still those things and kind of like parsing out like, the characters in Warmer and Reflections, they're, like, parsing out how to, like, communicate with whoever they're addressing. And then, like, in Little Angels, it's the same kind of, like... It's it's not, it's not like, a uh, melodramatic, like, oh, I need to, like, express this thing. It's more like, I'm trying to get at this thing. Um, it's not exactly working, but I'm trying to figure out how to express this yeah. thing, and it's causing some kind of... I mean, yeah, I guess it is, like... I guess what in that what that has in common is like addressing ambiguous states and how to approach those, like how to examine whether or not something is yeah good or bad for you, or if it's neither. Like, what does that mean? It's right. very much about like extreme ambiguity. <laughs> but did you? I guess what I meant to ask was because like oh, looking yeah. at the stuff in Gulag, I was like, I didn't realize that to me there's like. Seeing them all together, I was like, ah, they're it's like all the like they all have the same <laughs> theme, and then they're all like about like these little spaces, or at least I wasn't conscious of it at the time. But they're all about like 
someone in a space, people yeah. entering into that space or whatever. Yeah. Or like, um, but not like, uh, also, I think like not in a melodramatic way, but I didn't realize that until I saw them all together and I was wondering mm-hmm. if you, like you don't, I assume you don't like sit down and you're like, oh, this is my, this kind of communication <laughs> for characters reacting to temperature. That's not like something that like you think of as your theme, but did you notice, did you notice that when they were all? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that was the thing. I was like, why? I even brought up nothing because it was like, when I read them all again, I was like, wow, I like pointed out these same things, like with the same words, even multiple times. And even, and even certain drawing style, like fragments that do reappear over and over. And then, yeah, just be like, yeah. (laughs) Still trying to understand the same thing, aren't I? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, because for yours, like, I mean, I noticed it first when I had the disgusting room in newsprint was the, like, spatial importance. And then seeing it all together, too, it, like, really, like, I, I mean, I guess, like, my biggest notes were about just, um, like, about in, intrusion and personal space and kind of these, like, um, I don't know, intensity of social interactions and dynamics and how those things kind of like flow and weave in and out and I mean to me it was like it felt very much probably influenced by New York or San Francisco or just like being in city environments like even the fact that there's like a landlord as a main character is like that's so like the idea of being a tenant um is so New York feeling and what is that I don't know. Like, how obvious is that influence to you when you're working? But it's so weird because I, like, hearing... When I was, like, realizing how, like, that that is in all the stories and, like, describing it to myself as the summary of all the stories of having something to do that, I would never, <laughs> like... I personally think that, like, taking stuff like that seriously, I would be... I would find that ridiculous. You know what I mean? If someone was like, oh, my work's about... Oh yeah. These spaces being there's like a character intruding and it was like to me that sounds like insane. And I like I can only think of those situations as it's like how I try to construct all my stories. I have like an idea of like I'm like, oh I'm gonna make this like a thriller or this is just gonna be like more like um have some kind of slapstick element to it. But I have such a low level of craft to pull those things off that by the third panel, it becomes something else. And in a way, I'm just like trying to play catch up to like the original intentions of what I, because I have like something mapped out for what's supposed to happen. Okay. But then whatever, the way I get so into making the images and I get so into drawing the characters in different ways that the tone of the story becomes something completely different. But it's, and I guess I have these like, um, little templates of I do it's like sometimes I I do want to make the story have like a scary element to it but not an element that's going to be like deep psychological (laughs) horror more just like a thrilling horror element to it but I it's like so I'm like what is like something that's scary to me is I um you know I could I could relate it to like moving around uh like I was just I was just trying to like answer this and I was like I guess like the obvious answer would be I when I was growing up with my mom in San Francisco we had to we had to move a lot we went to we moved in a bunch of different places and we were always we did get evicted and whatever but I do like to me I never really I was never in pain over that stuff and it was never like something I'd be like oh I gotta like tell this uh, story you know it's, it wasn't this ever this is my story but it is something that also is like I do think that's I do and maybe going from there to living in New York where you do you know you can never really control um your personal space or you yeah. can really count on being that's well because in beds scary. also seem to play a really significant role of characters oh, yeah. being in bed and that kind of being like i mean in the city like your only point of like safety and independence or something where it's like that's where you like yeah. go curl up and cry and yeah. like you and your partner you just like sit there and go what are we doing exactly like, what is life <laughs> and then sometimes i'll sit and watch like a really beautiful serious melodrama dramatic movie and be really emotionally affected by it but it's so rare that that happens I usually think things that are like achingly serious are sometimes kind of like um gross me out or they seem unesthetic 
And I feel like things that are more, um, less weighted like that can actually be more affecting. Yeah. So, I don't know, but, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's definitely something important, but I just yeah. don't know. Uh, well, I mean, this relates, or this is also, like, I think relates to both of us in terms of, like, part of what also gives it the effect of, like, this city or, like, almost like a grittiness is the actual density of the imagery and the drawing, where it's, like, there isn't that space to breathe. Whereas, like, everyone with my work all the time, there's so much space. Yeah. Um, it's so empty. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so it's, totally. like, then those things automatically, like, influence what people are getting out of both of our work of, like, how it, you know, when I'm talking about, like, nothing or something or these, like, ambiguities, it's, like, because there's so much space where you're, like, I don't know how to interpret this. That's true. And in yours, too, it's, like, it's so dense that you're, like... <sighs> Yeah, the layout of your pages almost, they, they do have, like, a Pacific Northwest kind of, like, <laughs> open terrain. To, I mean, is that, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have thought of it unless you mentioned it that way. But it is, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's part of, like, I think, I mean, your, like, mental landscape is how how things are connecting or looping or, like, that, I think, does come out in the stories. yeah. Or, like, you, I don't know. Or something, too, where, like, I'm alone a lot and have been for the last five years just in random places. And I, so I'm, like, I'm in my, my head constantly. And I, sometimes I'm, like, the only person around. So when it's just, like, me in my head, I feel like it is this, like, their emptiness. Or, like, this lack of... Like, I was reading all these old journals of mine. And it's, like, I'm in these crazy places. But in my journals, I don't talk about those places at all. I just rant about how I'm feeling. Right. Well, you don't talk... Of, so you're... Do you mean, like, when you were living in places like um, Sebastopol? Yeah, there... Or, or, I guess, crazy places would be more like being, like, in Angoulême or something yeah. like that. So when you're in those places, you don't talk about the space it's, at all. It's more just your internal emotional... Yeah. I'm just, game. like, this crazy, repetitive, like, circular inner monologue... And it's so, because I wanted to, like, find these, I wanted to see if I, like, writ, wrote, like, nice notes about my surroundings, or was like, oh, did I describe that church or something? And then it's like, I am so sad and lonely, and, like, this person still won't talk to me, and I don't know what I'm doing. Like, in a million, in, like, 50 different cities, but I just have the same notes. the work doesn't, <laughs> I feel like the work feels like, well, there is, that was, I think a lot of times people discussed your work as being very formalist, but reading it all, or, or they, they're like, this person is doing something different with the form, and that mm -hmm. sometimes is like, uh, sometimes that is the discussion about what the work is like, but reading all the work together, I was like, it's really more, the emotion overwhelms the formalism, like, beyond, like, with, it doesn't even make, you, you forget, like, you don't even think of the approach, because they, they, to me, seem more like, these pockets of a specific emotion from yeah. story to story. Yeah. So, but if you're describing that in these journals you're ranting about everything that's happening, the work feels like not like a rant at all. It feels like very... It's not like you're cleaning up. It's not like the stories are you like cleaning up this, the if you feel like sad things are going on. It's not like you're putting a spin on it at all. There's like yeah. a sadness that seeps through them. Yeah. But they also feel more like measured or they're more like you're in control of the situation that I wouldn't even think of even being close to a rant you know what I mean yeah but I mean I think kind of what I mean is like how uh maybe how as much as I'm like in these different environments those environments aren't necessarily affecting me hmm. or like affecting the way I think which I think is why things are like getting more and more spacious almost. Right. Where it's like, it's not necessarily people in a setting or people being influenced by a setting. It's more these like other little actions or, or, or like just an emotional narrative, not yeah, well, there an is, action narrative. But there was, there was something in Little Angels where I was like, oh, this feels more like an urbane setting yes because someone is coming back and it's the first hint of any location yeah. in work <laughs> well although i mean the stuff in vastness feels like from your home true you know yeah, it's that like more was. but 
Well, but Little Angels was also commissioned by, like, Greater New York. Right. So I had to address New York. Oh. Is that is that a requirement of Greater New York? No, but because this wasn't a story that already existed. Right. They, I mean, they didn't say it had to be about New York, but they were, like, it asked to, like, invoke something about that. And for me, this is a place that's, like, can't really separate it from your interpersonal yeah, relations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it did feel like the conversation of Little Angels was something that couldn't happen, that, that felt totally different from the yeah. other ones, you know? Yeah, but it it's like... a little more, like, clipped. Like, it felt like the... Like, the clear declarations, even though they're moderated from the other ones, I felt a little... Just what they were saying felt a little more controlled. Yeah. You know? It was more like... I feel like it ended up more like a play. I mean, Christina and Charles is so impressive for 2005, too, just like, <laughs> but I, in see, terms of what was around, I think, I, or no? I, I, won't, I, guess, I mean, but I also feel like, to me, I was like, I guess I, um, I always misinterpret what I'm seeing for maybe the tone of what's happening, because I was like, at that time, I was so into, um, I, you know, I... I love, like, the history of comics, and I'm so into, like, all forms of, like, um, different things that are always happening with cartooning, and I felt like I had read Kramer's Regret 4, and I had, like, read all the issues of Raw when I was in high school, and, like, yeah. but I really liked Tintin and all this stuff, and I also really liked Matisse, and I was like, oh, well, this is just, like, this is sort of, to me, like, um, just like the stuff I'm seeing. And I guess now, looking back, it does, yeah, it looks weird in comparison to that. But I kind of just thought it was, like, a book of the moment, you know? It fits right in. Yeah, I thought yeah. it kind of fit right in. But um, I do think maybe, actually, you know what? Maybe, like, 2005 was a specific time. I feel like th maybe things have gotten a little more conservative since then. In, in yeah. the wider yeah. context of stuff. I mean, the that people, so. the, we, we, we know so many people that are, like, it's way more out there than Christina and Charles. But I do think overall, it like, um, I think things have gotten, I don't know, things have gotten a little squarer and like the larger yeah. thing because there's so many more people making. Or like things just didn't progress as much as they felt like they were going to then. Or yeah, like yeah, it maybe. felt like part of a wave, but that wave just kind of like, right. I don't know, became a pool that everyone just kind of doggy palling it that's <laughs> i think that i think about that sometimes because i think when i when i was like reading the stuff that was coming out at that time i was just like man just like yes like the idea of like uh you know experimental painting and experimental writing and comics just like coalescing to this thing that's not even experimental it's just like something that's just like so powerful mm -hmm. i was like of course like everyone sees that happening and it's like this is so great, and I'm so excited by it, and I didn't even, like, fucking question it. And now it definitely feels like I think people, even people that were, like, right at the forefront of doing it, maybe took a step back away from it. But then, I don't know. I mean, it's not like the stuff in Gula Casual and After Nothing Comes are, like, completely on their own. There's so much crazy yeah. stuff being done. I just feel like maybe it's... I don't know. Maybe it's just like, um, I don't know. I but mean, I think for me, like I really felt like, I think I felt when the blonde woman was coming out, I was like, Oh yeah. Like this is it. Like great. You know, things will be a breeze after this or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. it'll be so like easy to publish anything I want. Um, and it's still not. <laughs> but, you, but and you say that as someone who you publish a lot. Yeah. You know? But, but I, I thought, mean, but I thought eventually things would just be handed to me, and it's like, they're getting there now, maybe, but I'm like, but I, I'm from working a minute now. Like, I've been here. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> well, that's also why I, when I finished the stuff in Go Like Casual before it was supposed to be a book, I felt like I had, I'd been like, well, I, you know, and you know, everyone that makes comics knows, comics take so much work. Yeah. And I was like, man, this is just like, because the stuff in Go Like Casual is five years worth of work that I, I do really, I love. Yeah. And I was like, well, I, oof, that was that was a lot of work. And I don't see comics necessarily being like, um, I was like, man, it's so much work and I love it so much. But it's also, what a weird place to drop these statements into, which feels like a little 
ego maniacal, but I also did. <laughs> but also, if you're the person doing it, you're like, well, I did. Is this the right place to put all this yeah. uh, stuff to me that I that I care about into? And so I think for a couple of years after finishing this stuff in Gulag Casual, I definitely, I, and that's, I, I'm really excited about how I'm approaching things now where I was like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to make work that's more like, um, not for comics that, that I put as much energy into. And now I feel like this cool thing where I feel like I'm on safari between comics and drawing stuff that, that will be in shows. And I also yeah. I feel like both worlds are definitely have their problems, but I feel like if you don't have all your time and energy invested in one of the two areas, it doesn't feel like, it just feels like another thing you're doing. And I feel like yeah. really freed up by that. Nice. But maybe it's like you were saying after the long woman, it's like, you're like, I'm, <laughs> this is it. I <laughs> <can't>. here. <laughs> but you, I yeah. feel like you're doing the same thing. You know? Oh yeah. Maybe that. Yeah. Cause I don't think it could have, I mean, I don't think my energy would sustain if I wasn't also in art art i think for me the comics community feels so safe and supportive and even more thoughtful in a lot of ways um i think it's definitely smarter than it gives itself credit for in comparison yeah. to the art world yeah even just the fact that like my work has been continu has been reviewed since i put out warmer yeah like people are reading it and writing thoughtful responses and like probably you know I've never had my like art shows really reviewed in a way that's worth mentioning or like I don't see that happening I in for a while yeah yeah so like having oh, no, the not. critical response totally having a community that's like interested in me producing more but then financially it's like oh being in art actually like yeah I could like do drawings and it is more than any of my books have made me and I feel like being more in, like, doing stuff in both worlds, the art world, I think, like, the stuff we do is actually, cons like, fucking conservative in that world. And I feel oh, like yeah. that's a good, it makes me feel less, like, crazy about yeah. making the work. Sometimes you see work that, in the comics world, would not be thought of as that skilled. But in the art world, if it has just a little sense of doing figuration, people are like, oh, wow, this person like, really can draw. And you're like, but I know, what about, like, Lolly West? Yeah. She can really draw. Definitely, like, being in that community and absorbing so much visual information and being around artists who are, like, pushing their personal limits of, like, what they're creating is really helpful. Yeah. And inspiring. It's really cool. But I was wondering about how people have responded to work. Because I don't, I, yeah, haven't really read many reviews of anything. Like, I assume this is going to be well circulated. Oh. Someone cool. will have something to say. <laughs> And, like, what do you, I mean, what do people say? Oh, about about the work in there when it was, orig like, when it was published in the other Yeah. Comics. You know, it's always, it's always not that, not that much, you know? <laughs> it's usually more just, like, um, it usually is those responses, you know? It's more like, well, this is just, like, is this, it's usually, is this even comics? <laughs> Does this qualify yeah. as comics? I made a show right now where I just made a giant four-page comic yeah. for it. Because I'm like, literally, it's the only way I can think about showing images. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always... But I don't know. I always feel like... Yeah. But it works I in a different love, way. I love seeing people's... Yeah. I love it, it's like totally constructed in a very separate way. Which yeah. is how I had to approach it. Or else I would have been like, hey, yeah. Yeah, I always think maybe that is the right, like, to do to do something, like, with, with pages that's specifically for a show, that yeah. would be, I'm like, oh, man, I should figure out how to do that, but I almost feel like, oh, if I'm going to do something for a show, I'm like, <laughs> fucking vacation. And I mean, yeah, so you structure things out beforehand, or generally. I mean, because I notice bit, yeah. in, like, on certain pages, you have, like, dialogue written down, which I do, too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. page by page, kind of like, okay, what, what are they going to say next? And, like, writing little notes as it goes. Um, which was nice to see because then I'm like, okay, we maybe have very similar approaches. But there's elements in it that almost feel so traditional, like maybe you penciled out never. the figure. Oh, okay. I've never That's done really that. That's really interesting. Yeah. All the figure is completely as it goes. Like, but it's kind of where I, 
yeah, as it comes up, I'm like, oh, I need someone sitting. So, I mean, I'll pose for it. Right. Um, so the... But I never... I don't plan any drawing ahead of time. But the, but the actual pose, the idea of what the pose will be, will be not through, in, like, intuitive... It'll be... You'll know what the pose is when you place the pose on the page. It won't be like... Like, yeah. I'm drawing this and let's see how it, let's see how the character places itself. It'll be like, I, this panel calls for this, this kind pose. of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I usually act it out. Um, but I mean, it's been changing a little bit. Like I'm trying to draw more from my head. Those don't always make sense as I start working for right. real. So usually I'll go back or like I'll start taking that and putting it in other places or like if something shows up later I'll like find ways to start looping it around so it becomes more purposeful feeling or like right. I'll find a use for it eventually well they oh do you mean that they'll be done sometimes not in context of the story and then you have them and you oh okay yeah I'm like there's that thing oh, like yeah. now it's just like awkward yeah. so then I like find a way to make it useful yeah totally and like create I mean sometimes even like it like gives foreshadowing or like it ends up being useful yeah like this this mm -hmm. stuff I mean and there's one like okay you use those elements a lot mm -hmm. like in in the blonde woman there's like the pockets of that mm -hmm. but in this it's like this it's almost like a sustained narrative of that and this is what i was wondering there's so it's supposed to be a growing sequence so like actually every page each panel that's in the same spot is supposed to relate to that the panel from oh, before that makes sense um and that's kind of like how the images take shape, but it's also... You mean the, everyone that's... So this would relate to this, that? Yeah, at least in terms of like figuring out how, where, what's dark or like how the wash is used. Right. Um, and I mean, and not specifically like that's supposed to be like her being, becoming like super overwhelmed at this event. So it is supposed to be like this social thing. So there's like little glimpses of like a space and like figures. Um, I mean, it has like a very specific way that it's done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even like the solid color kind of relates to her little box because then she's repeated at the end in that same square. Right, yeah. Um, but then it's... But there, like she's there, gone. Yeah. She left the party. Yeah. So she, she's no longer there. I always, even though I've been in New York now for like, I guess total, like, if I subtract the two years I was in Sweden, I guess like 12 or 13 years now, I never feel like totally, I, I, I get into it so much here, but I also feel like I never feel totally comfortable. I'm like, you know, someone could like stab me in the back as I'm walking down the street. And I, the minute I moved to- break a bird down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas, whereas both those things in Stockholm, yeah. I would just like, you would, I would be shocked. Like if, yeah, if totally. anyone did anything, you yes. know? So I guess maybe I was just like, maybe able to fantasize more about like the aggressiveness here because I was like, not part of it and I can just like <laughs> joke around about it a little bit more I feel like maybe here like talking about that stuff is a little more like depressing because it's like you're dealing with it day to day when I first started trying to draw comics in fourth grade like even friends of mine who never ever went on to make art before that like, after they could draw a character in one panel and recognizably draw that character in the next <laughs> panel and I struggled with that then and I still really struggle with it now and I feel like by the end of a story just not just in terms of how the just not just contains how the characters look. Mm -hmm. The way I draw has just like if it's like goes on for forty pages, I'm like it's a completely different <laughs> way of drawing, or it's like evolved or devolved. So by the time I start something new, I'm like okay, I'm gonna I I'm gonna try to build on where I'm at now, and then that by the end of the narrative like changes into something else. So I guess I I guess what I try to do is like work with those kind of things. Because it's, it's hard for me to hone down on something. Yeah. So instead of being like, wow, fuck, like, I can't get it right, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to try to push that kind of uh, flaw of it as, as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like since doing drawings for shows and stuff, I've actually gotten a little bit more control over how I draw 
in the in the last couple of years. So when I start a new comic, I do want to maintain. I also feel like there must be some contrary thing where if there's one little element that people get into and something, I'm like, well, like, I'm gonna do something different. And now maybe for this next thing, I'll be like, maybe I'll try to do a story in the style of the drawings I do that have pencil and graphite because mm-hmm. I like doing those. Yeah, and I do feel like maybe they're easier for people to enter. Yeah. And I was like, maybe if I... And it's, I imagine it would be hard for me, but I was like, maybe if I just, like, just re- maintain the consistent style from beginning to end, that would be really interesting. It would be, like, it would be <laughs> such a challenge, and I would be, like, when it was over, it could be cool. So, But, yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily important. It's more of, like, necessity. Yeah. Yes. I, I like, then, that that's your challenge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Try to make them kind of look but the same. But your work in that collection has changed so much. Um, yeah. Don't you think that's just like, you can't, I don't know. Like. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess to me, it's like my my tools have been really stable. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm yeah. really, I'm using like the same paper, the same gouache, the same like mechanical pencil. Um, and I mean, I've like evaluated that to be like, oh, I'm focusing more on the narrative I guess. And, the, and so, like, the style kind of change and warps along with however that narrative is working. Right. But then also, I mean, all that's influenced, too, by, yeah, stuff I'm showing or stuff I'm making for other things. But the things you make for, at least the work I was seeing that you were doing when you first came to New York, the art you would do for art context stuff was, like, removing... It, it was, like... It wasn't like you're, like, well, I'm a cartoonist and I'm going to do work in gallery spaces now I'm going to do like a painting for it or just a yeah. handmade image it was like completely not that thrust. Yeah. so but that speaks more to like you being consistent with like when you make images you're really consistent with you never so you didn't have the impulse to be like I'm going to use I'm going to do something in a different sphere and do like completely different I mean it was different in the sense that I like well I mean, I guess I've, like, I've kind of disappointed myself (laughs) because I just keep, everything just comes back around to drawing where I was, like, really trying to push doing other things. Yeah. And then, I mean, I get, I, like, I was doing ceramics for a while, but those don't make sense. Like, the stuff I was doing didn't actually make sense um, and wasn't strong. How do you mean? I, well, I think it's been, like, trying to come to terms with, yeah, like, whatever my, like, visual voice or message would be as a showing artist versus a comic artist or something, and how to make those cohesive or not, or, like, what that is, um, and, like, I had no, uh, I just had nothing to say about that stuff. But it's, it's, but it's, like, almost like saying, like, um, super special, it's like you did super special and you're like, well, this is not exactly what I mean to say. You know, it's like your first step. Yeah, yeah. True. And so, I mean, I think I was like trying to go all in, but in an area where I like, I have nothing to back it up yet or something. Yeah. So I'm like, now I'm kind of backing up and taking it slower and like, I mean, I'm still have like pieces on fabric that I think work as standalone pieces and I can kind of like back up where the imagery is coming from or like whatever it's doing and then yeah and like working more and like metal like small things which also like all those things i can kind of like actually vocalize what it's about to me but that's so i mean that is a pretty big um challenge to present yourself with it's like not only is this work going to be in a completely different context than like the close to a decade worth of work I've done, but it's going to be in a completely different medium. I'm not even going to... You've made so... You've done so much... Im, you've done so much image-based work made yeah. by hand. Yeah. And then you're going to do something that's completely... I don't know. I mean... Well, I think it, it's, it's all tough. starting to make sense together. I think seeing it operate in space together is working. Yeah. And that's, you know, definitely the goal or idea. But I think we... Everyone puts too much pressure on like being like well I did this thing and now I'm doing this thing how does it all it's just like I don't know you're just like I get a little maybe that's like what's nice about being in part of two things it's like people that are like I am a cartoonist or like you know in the uh, inverse of being like well I'm just like I am part of the grand history of painting it's like well if you want to think of yourself that way but really you're you're a person 
yeah. and you <laughs> happen to do these things that I that are often really beautiful, but you're really just you you can do anything. You can try out anything. True. And I think then it's like feels less I don't know. I, I do feel like I'm I'm in the studio now trying to figure out how to do painting and yeah. I feel like I am one hundred percent like because I have this space for a year. It's so big. If I'm going to work with paint, it's going to be now. Oh, absolutely. When I look at this stuff, I'm like, whoa, this is like, I would not respect the person doing this. But it's like, it's like, but I also like really enjoy doing it. It's so fun. It's like, fun. just physically like fun. Yeah. And I'm like, well, fuck, am I going to deny myself keeping, it also feels like professionally silly because I'm like, well, this is the work I'm making now and I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but it's like, am I going to like let that self, de- let that deny me from like, going through with it and figuring it out I mean it's just too I don't know it's just too fun yeah um I mean I was oil painting for like a year and a half or something very regularly and I had to stop because it really like it wasn't settling at all when was this? every painting was wildly different yeah the whole time I lived in California oh okay so around yeah because like I saw two, you two three three years yeah, ago yeah 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 I, like, so the, the never settled on a voice that, like, was me. None of it felt authentic at all. It was wild. It was all so different and so weird. Oh, I would love to... Yeah, I don't even think... I he, painted... I, and I Then I was, like, going crazy because I was, like, oil painting takes so long. And I was, like, literally spending, like, you know, like, like six hours a day regularly yeah. doing it. I'd be, like, for what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it's... Yeah, and it's really... I... That's, like, when I've tried to work with oil paints, it's so, it is incredibly hard. It's like you're, yeah. I think, like, um, like Gary Pan, like, someone told me Gary Panner has this quote where he's like, oil painting is like a um, battle you're losing every second. Oh, my God. Which is so, I was, and I was so, <sighs> like, when I tried to work with oil paints, I'm so naive about that stuff. I was like, oh, you know, when I work with drawings, I, like, you know, I erase it, and then I, like, so use something from it being erased and, like, <laughs> add it. Yeah. And then it was with, like, oil painting, I was like, oh, I'll just change that around. I was like, oh, now it's all a uh, gray mess, <laughs> and I've used all this, like, you know, I saved money to buy yeah. these oil paints, and just, like, they're all on this one oh, fucking God. canvas. But it was also, like, I don't know, I wish, um, don't you think part of it is... We, there's no, you don't need any setup to make comics. Whereas if we wanted to make, if we wanted to keep our practice of oil painting and it didn't give you a headache, you would sometimes like dip back into it and then you would over time be more assured with it. I just feel like it's such a, like uh, the bar of entry with that. It's such a risk because it's like costs so much money and you need space and it's so messy. Time. Yeah. Time, time, time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think when it, like, I just always wanted to be a painter. And then I feel like by the end of that, I was like, oh my God, I'm not a painter. Mm. I use, like, I use gouache, but I'm, like, not a painter. Right. Like, some of the images turned out nice, but none of them did anything for me. Right. So you think, but, so then the storytelling aspects of comics, or the way comics, that feels like, that's something that... It, it almost seems like you're saying, like, the other stuff you've tried and it feels, like, alien. So there's something essential about comics that is, like... Oh, like, totally. Yeah. And to drawing, too, because I, like... I just love drawing. And comics feels like the, like, best format to utilize that love. Right. Because it's pulling in all these other elements that make it more, like, interesting and dynamic. And it's, like... As much as you can appreciate the drawing fr- of it, it's like the way that you can get someone wrapped up in what's actually going on yeah. is so cool. Yeah, there's so it's like you have so many tools just inherent in the in what is the essential elements of comics. Like there's just so much that you can use and play around with. But ma- yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and so like yeah, it's kind of seeing like which things end up feeling. Comfortable. I mean, the stuff that I've had printed on silk feels good. And, like, and my metal work feels really good for some reason. So I'm sticking with those. Right. It's just the oil painting. Right? It's just oil painting. And, well, and I still love ceramics, but, like, it, it's... That's just more like a, like a relaxing hobby for well, now. there's something about I the don't engine of comics that doesn't, like, doing ceramics doesn't, it's just, like, there's so much, like, built into it Yeah, that, like, keeps you going. Yeah, well, and I think that's, too, like, being around so many artists who work in so many different 
disciplines is listening to other people who paint or who do ceramics or sculpture and the way they approach their work. I'm just like, my brain doesn't do what theirs is doing. Right. And I'm, and that's kind of where like, but their brains can never do what I'm doing. But see, I also I feel, know. I guess maybe I'm just attracted to trying that stuff. Cause when <laughs> I, when I, I wish I could say like, oh yeah, I know. Like when people talk about cartooning, I like get what they're talking about. And you know, when people talk about painting, I don't get what they're talking about. But I have to say like listening to people talk about cartooning, even though I'm so oh, wow. into it, I mean, it also feels like, even though the history of comics and like, like certain inkers uh, being better than other inkers, I get that. But actually, I like I get a lot of pleasure about talking about that stuff. But doing my own work, I feel like I'm coming at it in my own way that I've worked out that feels foreign, just as foreign as my way of making single images yeah. sounds when other people talk about it. So I just yeah I don't know I just feel no like that's actually. I don't want to do anything that's hard for me. Like, <laughs> well, but I mean, you I do. But, but I mean, you do do something that's hard. Like, you make these. I mean, isn't it? You know, it's not. I, when I see something that I like, I feel in direct competition with it. Mm. But I have never had the impulse to figure out how that person <laughs> did it. I more think like, well, I have to from the system that is me. I have to, and it's. It's love and competition. Yeah. Like if I see a painting or a, a feeling play or like anything, just the feeling of it. Like, I have to, if I'm going to be an artist, I have to do something that I think is as affecting as that, but I have to do it. It's also, yeah, it probably is from an aversion to, because I always hated, I hated school so much and I hated doing things, I hated yeah. doing any work. So, but it's to me, I'm like, I have to equal this just through my own ability, like whatever is already here. You feel like you have the faculties. I think it's there. Like, yeah. I think, yeah, I think the more I work, the more I can make things. I mean, because I don't even have ideas about what I want my stories to look like until I've started them. And so even that's, like, yeah, not really challenged. Whereas I think a lot of comic artists know what they want their story to look like. Or what it is. Well, they have, I do think that's something that a lot of comic artists have the dream of a perfect comic. Yeah. The one that they read and they are processing themselves through recreating that and just the way the colors look. I love drawing things in different ways from panels to panel and I was like, instead of being like, instead of hating myself for doing that, I was like, I'm gonna fucking embrace that and see what happens with that. Yeah. So, and that, yeah, I get so much, like, that's the thing. It's like when I sit down to like draw the character again, I'm like, oh, but I'm gonna make him like, his belly really big in this one because <laughs> who's gonna tell me not to? And yeah. I get so I get so into that. Oh yeah, that's definitely where it's fun. Yeah, totally. And right. yeah, and no one is your boss. Yeah. No one. And also, I think you said something when you were uh, editing Astral Talk, where you were talking about how like there's so much untapped potential in comics, and I feel like, you know, it's so. It is. A, it's so, still such a small community, and it's like, why not? You know, oh, why totally. not do it how you want to do it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that was something I was like. I tried to push in my class too. Like, yeah, I mean, with people having like so many preconceptions, and like, even though when I'd be like, don't, don't plan your story, don't plan your story. They people would be like, well, can I do this now? And I'd be yeah. like, no. <laughs> I was like, you have all like you can do whatever you want the rest of the time. But you know, of your life, but it. you're here this week for me, and I'm telling you, please don't plan a story. And they just be like, but, but it's that's, a comic. Yeah, but see, I see that's that's why it'd be hard for me to do teaching because I would be like, I would immediately be like, well, I want these people to do what they want, and I this know, person I wants know. to plan, and that's them expressing. <laughs> I could imagine now like struggling to recreate drawings or or learning more from past masters. I could now see that mm -hmm. opening. I could see it in the near future being a pleasure learning that stuff rather than something that's like yeah thing. yeah i mean i like enjoy utilizing comics formatting things yeah well that's now. yeah and you were saying that in the interview with bill like you actually are using like you're yeah. drafting things out and yeah and it's fun yeah and being like okay like i'm working within a world where there's so many things set up to use 
like how do I want to use those now? Yeah, but you use them because you want to because yes. it's like because it, now it's, you've gotten to the point where it makes sense. Yeah, and I feel like totally allowed to do anything I want to. Yeah. 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 Totally. Totally allowed to do anything I want. I think that's a good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean nothing's at stake. I mean, really. Yeah. Like, no, that's like a good um, end cap for the. I'm totally allowed to do anything I want. That's like a good final <laughs> sentence for the interview. Done. Unless there was more. I mean, I just. I don't know. I felt like that last. I think this is an hour and twenty two minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs>